I've spotted about six nests around about the house and it's a great source of procrastination to go out and watch the birds at work just to and fro with the food to the chicks. They never complain. I suppose like all parenting, there's an unconditional love built into the thing. Here's two parents who were getting a bit pissed off with it all. A poem called Sleep With It by Blake Morrison. Wrecked by our children. We sit among the spars of a Chinese takeaway, washed up and hollow-eyed, hanging on for nothing but the epilogue, two ruined late, late lives. Another night ahead of waking from sleep seabed to the cry of a kitty wake, a wow, wow, dragging me blind towards the child among wave-tossed bedsheets, howling to be airlifted free. The compulsion of people to remake themselves could die in a room like this, a graveyard of ambition where hopes lie scattered with the Lego, a city just abandoned or sacked. But we'll be right again by morning, as light or love halos every game they play. Seth, grounded with his balsa plane, Afra all at sea, in her own puddle, which glimmers like a dropped silk dress. And I've been doing a lot of work looking at my family tree recently. I'm looking into the O'Hanlons, the Dowdles, the Hoys and the McKnights. And some of the older photos, as you may have of your own, can seem stern. And you feel they must have led very hard lives. But of course, the instruction in those days was, don't smile, keep steady for the photograph or you'll ruin it. And possibly our misconceptions or preconceptions about the Victorians are based on that style of photography. Here's Victorian family photograph by Kit Wright. Here is the mother, all boobed and bodicey, who started the children upon their odyssey. There sits the father, stern as a rock who rules the world with his iron cock. Those, the two children, white as mice, who saw the ghost in the attic twice. And who are we to suppose this vignette not treaded with love like a stringed quartet? <laughs>